Tobias takes Nora, his daughter, to the Troll Peaks in the mountains of Rumsdalen, Norway. According to the fairy tale, thirteen trolls gathered for a wedding here but got so drunk that they lost track of time and turned into mountains. Tobias is hurt to hear Nora say that she's no longer interested in fairy tales. He reminds her to believe in being able to see. Nora, an archaeologist, is on a dig with her team on the Atlantic coast of northwestern Norway twenty years later. Nora, however, is not giving up. She has been searching for six months without success, and her funds are low. She is rewarded for her persistence when she finds the skull of a dinosaur, and the team celebrates. In the Dovre Mountains, a group of construction workers is digging through the mountain to build a new rail line. Activists who are against this destruction of the environment have been very vocal, but their presence has been ignored. As the explosives finally ignite to begin the tunnel, something deep within the mountains grumbles and causes an explosion from which workers cannot escape quickly enough. The Norwegian armed forces immediately detected this incident and the seismic activity that it caused. They send a reconnaissance plane to investigate. Sigrid manages the cameras and those aircraft. She quickly creates a series of visuals, which she shows her superiors who decide that this is important enough to alert Barrett, Prime Minister. Andreas, Barrett's advisor, shows her the photos taken by the unknown forces. Andreas believes that the images look like footprints. Andreas is given two tasks by Barrett. Keep the media away from these facts and find some experts in science who could assist them. Nora is picked up by a helicopter in the middle of her celebration and asked to go with her for a national security matter. Andreas welcomes Nora at the base then takes her to an important secret meeting where Barrett and the other military leaders discuss possible reasons for the incident that occurred in the mountains. Nora is not taken seriously when she presents herself as a paleontologist, because dinosaurs have long since disappeared. The team has not ruled out the possibility that the attack was a military one, but the reports so far seem to support the geological theory. The scientists are shown images of a crater, indentations, and a landscape. They then throw out theories such as sinkholes and subterranean gas pockets. Nora interrupts to say that those craters are clearly footprints. But once again, Nora isn't taken seriously because footprints are supposed to mean monsters. This is a ridiculous idea. Sigrid interrupts the conversation again. She has hacked the phone of an activist and found live footage. Nora asks Sigrid to play the video slowly so that the other participants can return to their gas theory. In the shadows, a large and mysterious humanoid figure is visible amongst the falling stones. In Lesha, a couple of old people wonder what has happened to their dog who will not stop barking. The couple hides in the basement to avoid the house crumbling and losing power. When the shaking stops, they find that their home is completely destroyed. The dog, however, is still fine. Nora explains that they should not sit on their butts for whores arguing about the possibility of a giant creature leaving their footprints. Nora is asked by Andreas to investigate the latest incident with Lesia. Barrett is also impressed by Nora's attitude. Andreas, the pilot, asks Nora about her career as a paleontologist. Nora replies that she has loved nature ever since she was young, and she grew up loving fairy tales, which led to her wanting to find the real monsters below ground. Nora hasn't seen Tobias for years. Andreas admits that he is a writer, and he's excited by the idea of the incident being supernatural. Nora, however, cuts him off as they reach their destination. The military has already secured the area. Captain Christopher welcomes Nora and shows her the tracks, which came from the other side of the river, into the valley, then made it two miles into the mountains, before stopping. The soldiers searched the entire area but found no clues. Nora asks some questions to the couple, but the sun is blocked by a huge moving figure. They did hear something, however. A howling sounding like a sad melody. Nora examines the damage again and discovers an unusual and strong smell, which she calls hypernature. She uses UV light as well to search for biological traces but finds only earth and stones. Nora wants to go to a place where tracks abruptly stop and thermal scanners show no sign of life. Only mountains. Nora wonders whether this creature can camouflage itself since it is too large to hide or vanish. Nora is starting to form some theories, but she's still not sure. So she takes Christopher, Andreas, and Tobias to Tobias, who pulls out a gun when he notices strangers in his yard, particularly an armed soldier. 
Tobias agrees to let the girls in after Nora explains that this is his daughter, whom he hasn't seen for years. He will have to wear some pants before he can do so. Tobias has a house full of paper clips, research, and other items that demonstrate his obsession to find a mythical creature called a troll. Nora asks him to stop talking and concentrate on the footage that she shows him. She explains she believes his old work could contain some clues. Since nobody knows the mountains better than him, he is asked to concentrate on the footage she shows him. She explains that her old work may contain some clues. Tobias believes that this footage is proof of his troll hypothesis. When Nora points out that scientists would have already found troll DNA if the creatures existed, Tobias reminds Nora of how the Christianization in Norway got rid of all the mythical beings. Tobias, who was about to reveal all of it, was sent to the lunatic bin. Tobias believes that the authorities have known for a long time, and fairy tales were created to make trolls appear dumb and evil when they are quite intelligent. Nora is shocked by what she hears, but Tobias joins in the team and continues the investigation. Tobias notices the topography of the area is completely different from the maps. Nora does not want to see this as a reconciliation. The smell of hyper-nature suddenly hits their noses, and the sky turns dark as the mountain in the background opens its eyes. Both father and daughter were right. It is a troll. His ability to camouflage allowed him to appear to be a part of the mountain. This explains why the topography wasn't correct. The team ran back to the helicopter in order to escape. When the base receives the transmission, they are no longer able to deny the truth. Christopher brings the group to the military camp to tell the base what they have learned. Nora uses the phrase unknown creature to avoid looking crazy. Tobias, however, interrupts and tells everyone that the troll was bothered by construction in the mountain range. Tobias believes that this is a mockery of nature. Nora is not heard when she asks for more. They are worried about their country's safety, so they will prepare for a military operation. Nora, furious at her father for ruining everything, wants to leave, but Tobias convinces her otherwise by explaining that he knows it's not a fairy tale, and this isn't a troll. Weapons and sunlight will be enough to push back the threat. Weapons will only make the troll angrier. Nature is always pushing back. Nora agrees with his reasoning and stays. Now, it's up to Christopher convincing him to take the kids along. After Nora begs him, he agrees to let the trio hide in his helicopter, as long as they promise that they will follow his instructions. By the time the entire military operation reaches Heidal, night has fallen. Tobias, Nora, and their troll wait in anticipation. They remember old stories they shared during their adventures. Tobias knows the creature is aware of their presence when it stops moving as soon as he gets near. Tobias warns the soldiers that the explosions and bullets will only anger the troll. But the bullets have no effect, and it attacks back as Tobias predicted. The troll starts destroying everything in its way, including the cameras transmitting the operation back to the main base. The team hides with a wounded soldier behind a large tree. When they are about to leave, Tobias says that the troll may have smelt the blood of the soldier from his wounds. Nora, Andreas, and Christopher are ready to flee but Tobias decides he will approach the troll in a friendly manner. To everyone's surprise, the troll stopped moving and answered Tobias with gentle groans. Unfortunately, not all of the soldiers understood. When the troll turns to counterattack and fires back, Tobias is hit by the truck. Nora runs to her father as the troll leaves, and Tobias murmurs, The palace, king, home, telling his daughter to never forget to believe. Nora, when they return to base, keeps busy reading Tobias's research in order to forget about the pain. She's also looking for a way to solve the problem. Andreas and Christopher, who come to check on her, tell her that they have lost sight of the troll, but are preparing an airstrike. Nora believes that this attack will result in the same outcome as the previous one. They need to think outside of the box. They've seen it come out in daylight. Nora gets an idea from Tobias when he mentions how the Norwegian Christianization destroyed the trolls. They explain to Barrett and others that there are stories about trolls throwing boulders when they hear the church bells. This means they should use bells. Barrett reluctantly allows them to continue the plan. The troll reappears a few moments later and comes closer to the Hunderfossen family park, causing panic in the crowd. Christopher, Nora, and the hover-carrying giant bells arrive in a helicopter as everyone is running away, except for the little girl. Nora is right. The bells do hurt the troll's ears. 
The troll doesn't hesitate, however, to attack to defend himself. He hits the helicopters, causing them to crash. The troll grabs the helicopter before walking away to save the girl, when one of them is about to fall over her. The troll is now known to the entire world, as it has made its way towards the capital. The incident is covered by news broadcasts in every country, and the phone recordings go viral on social networks. Barrett is furious when Nora points out that the bells worked and they should try it again, but from a new angle. She then kicks her out of the base. Nora runs into Christopher on her way out. He confesses that he believes Barrett made a mistake, and that he will be there to help Nora in the future if she needs anything. The military leaders in the conference tell Barrett that some dangerous missiles have not been approved officially yet. Andreas argues that weapons of this kind shouldn't be even considered, but this gets him thrown out of the meeting. He decides not to take Nora seriously and to rejoin her on his way out. He tells Nora to prepare because they are evacuating. Moments later, Barrett appeared on TV to announce the official declaration of a state of emergency and to ask all citizens to work together as their soldiers prepare for the next mission and assist them in evacuating without incident. Nora and Andreas get stuck in traffic in the same vehicle. Nora takes this opportunity to continue reading Tobias's research. The pages are constantly mentioning Sinding and something about a doorkeeper. Andreas then comments that it could be Ricard Sinding, the Lord Chamberlain of the Royal Palace. Nora remembers Tobias saying, King, Palace, and Home, just before he died. So she decides they should go to the Royal Palace. Andreas takes them to the gate, and the guards stop them. Sinding comes immediately to let them through because he was expecting Tobias, or someone who is related to him, to arrive sooner or later. Sinding says he respected Tobias even though Tobias disliked him. His stubbornness made him one of the only people to discover the secret beneath the palace. It was once considered lucky to build a house on top of a king's residence. This particular palace is built where the troll formerly lived. Nora and Andreas enter a tunnel filled with trolls' bones. Sinding explains how the Christianization in Norway destroyed everything that was against their beliefs, that they had ambushed the royal family of trolls, and that only one baby was spared to lure the king into the mountain. They locked it in a cavern and left it to die. Tobias learned about this secret twelve years ago and Sinding sent Tobias to the lunatic bin to keep it a secret. Nora is furious because he feels bad but still thinks that it's the right thing. Nora understands that Tobias is right. The Troll King will be home in the palace soon, and they must stop him. Nora noticed that her UV light was damaging the bones. This proves the sun stories to be true. The Troll was out in the open during the day, but the clouds and mountains prevented them from seeing it in direct sunlight. Andreas reminds Nora that they cannot control the sun. She calls Christopher for his help. He will set up a trap, while Nora and Andreas are luring the troll towards it. Barrett decides to use the missiles after the troll arrives in the city. The military attacks have failed again, so she approves their use. Sigrid calls Andreas in order to warn him that the leaders are about to launch these missiles. They need to find a solution to buy some time. Andreas has Sigrid hack the army system in order to stop the launch while Christopher rings the alarm all over the town. This brings all of his soldier friends near him to assist with the trap. Sinding also helps by asking the guards for the skull of the troll to be placed on the largest truck that they have. Nora and Andreas then drive the truck around the city in order to lure the monster away from the palace. Sigrid has to try several times before she can get in the system, but when she does, she stops the missiles immediately, giving Nora, Andreas, and the necessary time. The troll is getting closer, and they decide to take off. They reveal the skull that's on the back. This makes the troll roar and chase them. Nora tells Christopher that they are on their way. He then gives a speech to motivate his soldiers to remain brave when the monster appears. After a lot of crazy driving in the streets of Oslo, Nora and Andreas finally reach the highway, only to lose their skulls on the way. The troll comes to the ground and picks it up. It lets out a wailing groan in sorrow for its children, before noticing its reflection on a nearby building. The troll is startled by the noise when it attempts to touch the broken glass. It drops the skull which then breaks into millions of pieces. Nora is made to feel sad by the troll's rage. Nora returns to her original plan and drives away. She avoids all of the damage the troll causes as best she can. 
Sigrid is found hacking at the base, and her computer is taken away to restart the system. Nora and Andreas arrive at the trap area seconds later. They jump out of their truck to lure the troll to the middle as it steps onto the vehicle. The soldiers then activate dozens of UV lights to surround the creature and begin burning it. The missile-carrying plane is also getting closer, but the pilot hesitates as he notices the civilians. The operation is aborted when Sigrid punches the idiot at the base who doesn't give a damn about his citizens. Christopher and his soldiers have already celebrated the victory. Nora, however, can't bear to hear and see a life suffering like this. She turns off the electricity that could save it. Nora, like her father, approaches the troll in the same manner, asking it gently to return to the safety of the mountains. The troll looks at her and considers her words. But before it reacts, the sun rises, burning the troll to rubble. Andreas makes a joke about the name of this new hill or monument, but Nora comes up with Tobias Boulder as a solution. Barrett thanks Nora when she arrives moments later. Andreas tells the Prime Minister that he has quit his job and will be a writer. When he leaves with Nora, he wonders whether there are more creatures in Dovre. Deep in the mountains, something is beginning to move beneath a large pile of stones.